Vancouver Island School of Art, we have three different programs. We have a, a Certificate of Visual Arts, which is an eight-month program. And then we have a Diploma of Fine Arts, which is three years. And then we have the Independent Studio Program, which is an eight-month program for people who have already done a degree or diploma in art and just want to have an intense period of study focusing on one idea. And so this is what Claire, this is her graduation exhibition from the Independent Studio Program. So Claire has been working every day, constantly <laughs> making lots of work. This is probably about uh, like 1 25th of the work that was done. So it's a, it's a very edited show, but that's part of the process. You do a lot of work and then you decide which work works the best in the show. And it's not just about the quantity of, sh of the work, it's also about the space between the work. So there were a lot of really great pieces that we couldn't include, but it was just to make the best show possible. So that's what, so the part of the program is uh, Claire meets with the um, advisor every two weeks. So <laughs> I met with Claire and it was just always such a pleasure because right from the very beginning, she always spoke so clearly about her work and felt there was this real sense that you had a direction, but there was also that kind of uncertainty and just kind of work with the both at the same time. It's really great watching that. So Claire's going to say a few words about her work. So I'd like to welcome Claire. Okay, thanks everyone for coming. Some of you I've known for a long time. Excuse me, forever. Some of you were with me when I started this journey that has ended up here, and so it's really nice to see you. And then some of you I've known for about six months or so, and some of you just sort of because you come in and out of the building or whatever, but it's really nice to see you all here, so thanks a lot for coming. So the work in this show is my personal response to an overwhelm overwhelming environmental issue, but it's also the result of a new direction that I took in my artistic practice because of my frustrations with what I had been doing before. So what I was doing before was I spent about four years cleaning ocean debris from beaches. So that meant that I would clean bits of plastic and polystyrene and rope and stuff like that off beaches. And it was very repetitive. It was physically demanding and often overwhelming. And I began to get increasingly frustrated because it felt as if my actions were invisible. So I could go along, walk along the beach and I could pick up all this stuff and then the tide would come in and there would be a whole lot more. And so it seemed as if there was no visible results to my actions. So last summer, I was here, I was actually renting studio space and I decided I needed to make an action that would have a visible result. So I went upstairs into one of the um, classrooms and I took a piece of chalk and I covered a chalkboard with row upon row of little lines of white chalk. And I was really pleased because I could see what I had done. So that sort of became the basis for what was then seven months of experimenting and trying out what you can do when you keep repeating an action that results in a specific mark. So that's what this work is really about. So it's about repetition and endurance, and it's also about visibility and invisibility. So sometimes you can see every mark, sometimes you can see the edges around the marks, sometimes you can, on some of the pieces, if you look hard enough, you can actually even see where I had to repair the piece of paper before I could actually start working. And in some of the pieces, the marks become so overlaid that they actually obscure themselves. And then, maybe because I spent all this time, you know, looking at rubbish, most of the material is found material or really readily available and cheap material. So the wood was all found wood. The paper, a lot of the paper I used was paper that came from sort of like discarded children's scribbling books or stuff like that. Um, I even found a wall to draw on. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of... And the thing was that as soon as I started thinking, okay, I'm going to use found materials, they just started to appear. So it's like this kind of magic that happens. Um, and, and then what happens is that there's this sort of strange um, kind of 
dichotomy between the fact that I'm using these really cheap materials, but I'm spending a lot of time on them. So again, there's this sort of endurance that's involved in actually making the work, even though what I'm working with might seem initially to be to have little value. And so then what I ended up with are all pieces like this, where I have all these marks, and they make me really happy when I look at them, because I can see the result of my work. They make a kind of a language, or maybe a kind of strange counting system, maybe something from, you know, outer space, or, I don't know, some previous civilization, and we don't know how to read it anymore. Um, and they mean that I am here, because I made the action, and I can see the result. So that's it. <laughs> Peter Mark, and okay. so with, when you're when you're sewing with running stitch, you you're in effect repeating the same stitch over and over. Oh, yeah. So it's just a really good way of making that repeated mark. And are those hand sewn? Yeah, they're, yeah. We thought they were machine sewn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually that, that that one in particular, the paper one, was really terrifying because um, although I waxed it before I started stitching, um, stitching into paper. You know, at any stitch, you could break the paper. So I actually worked in a constant state of tension making that one. Um, and I could only do about that much, and then I'd have to stop, and then put it away for a day, and then come back and do that much. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and then during the time when you were drawing on the blackboard, you took the drawing astronomy yeah. with me, and that black piece, that small that, square, was your response. We were talking about like drawing yeah. the stars. Yeah. And yeah. And so that really kind of, yeah. that was the beginning of the That was the beginning of, yeah, of using the stitching, yeah. Yeah. Okay, some of the um, papers, not all of them, but some of them, I know you had to choose either to put a white ground or a black ground on them. Was there any particular logic to that? No. Yeah, not so we really. were talking about black um, and white yesterday. Yeah, no, because what I, quite often what I do is I'll prepare a lot of surfaces. So like in my studio right now, I have about four or five <coughs> pieces of paper that I've, um, that again, they're scrap paper that I've, I've already painted white, and they're just sitting there, waiting to be used. And that's the same, that's what I did with these. I had um, those two, one of them is blackboard, but the other one is a piece of, of wood that I had painted. So I had, they're kind of sitting there, and then I kind of think about them, and then I get the urge and I work on one rather than the other. Do you want to talk very... about why that one's uneven? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Wendy's very upset by the fact that... No, I'm not upset. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's basically, it's... Um, the, when I, I put these two pieces up on the wall, and I, I also had other pieces that... So the idea was that I was going to have about four or five different pieces that would all have the dots going across them. So there was, there was going to be some down below. But at the same time, I think I obviously didn't put them, I didn't put them so that they actually lined up straight anyway, to begin with. But the way they're arranged is by the rows, not by the actual ground. So the rows, they kind of match up. So when you, when, I, when you put them on the wall, I have to arrange them so that the rows of dots match up. And then you'll notice, if you look carefully, that at the bottom of the long one, there are two rows that don't, aren't, don't connect to the other piece because they originally connected to something else that was down below, mm -hmm. but I didn't like that, so I just kept the two. <laughs> so, so in art, you can break all rules. You can break all rules. You can I, talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and it's a bit like with Mary's question, you, you know, you think that there has to be a logic to it, 
but often the logic arises in the actual making. Yeah. Um, and, and then you suddenly realize that you're doing something and that a rule is being created. And at that point, you follow the rule. Well said. Mm -hmm. We don't seem to use a lot of color. Why, what, I mean, <laughs> why, why is that? Good question, Mary. Well, I started off with white because um, in, I had been picking up um, mostly polystyrene because when I, I'd been living in James Bay for a year, and that's what I was picking up in James Bay, was mostly polystyrene. And so because I've been looking at this polystyrene, that's why I started with white. And then once I had discovered chalk and sort of very, uh, chalk and white charcoal, I stuck with the white because it's such beautiful stuff. And what I really like about it is that you hold it in your hand. There's nothing between you and the thing that's going on there. So it's, it's a really great way to work. Well, Claire will be here if you want to talk to her. Thanks, that was really fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.